Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunk of Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics. But before we get started with today's episode, if you are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five star rating, like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications, and give us a nice review on all podcast streaming platforms. I'd greatly appreciate that, and so would the rest of our people here at the Off the Ball Network would as well. But without further ado, let's get started with today's episode because we we got to talk about this highly anticipated matchup number one defense versus the number four defense in the entire nba both sides have a lot of point of attack and tremendous interchangeable guys defensively and i think heading into this series obviously boston with them having home court advantage jason tatum fresh off of of a nearly 30 point per game outing average against the brooklyn nets uh, and being able to minimize kevin durant and kyrie Irving offensively holding kevin durant to 38 percent shooting in that first round series and just displaying his all nba level defense while also putting on display his elevation as a playmaker and just being able to showcase his all-around game in that first round series while also tying in that chris middleton wasn't going to be available for this series i think there was a lot of things that pointed in the direction of this boston celtics team being in favor to not only win the series but definitely come into game one and win this opening game and you know, I was very curious as to how Mike Budenholzer was going to be able to, you know, kind of combat Chris Middleton's absence with him, you know, being one of the primary initiators of the spread pick and roll offense that allows Giannis Antetokounmpo to work the center of it, be able to uh, operate within the dunker spot, utilize him on the perimeter a little bit, and be surrounded by, you know, a, a ton of floor spacers and Bobby Portis, Chris Middleton when healthy, obviously, Grayson Allen, Brooke Lopez, and a number of these guys, right? And you know, Mike Budenholzer, he made it he made it adamant that he was going to put Giannis Antetokounmpo on the perimeter a lot more, allow him to, you know, kind of dictate the pace and, you know, what what we were going to do offensively in a half court setting from that dynamic. And, you know, I think in the first quarter, he was baited into a few bad shots to a certain degree. You know, I give credit to the Boston Celtics defense. They made it a little bit tough on him. You know, some of his shots were a little bit abnormal, off balance and things of that nature. But for the most part, he did a great job in terms of driving and kicking, being able to create shots for guys like Grayson Allen, Bobby Portis on the perimeter. And Drew Holiday did a phenomenal job in terms of playing on ball and off ball, playing off of Giannis Antetokounmpo in a lot of instances in the first quarter specifically. You know, he got off to a pretty hot start, built momentum in an early rhythm for himself individually. And I think the rest of these Milwaukee Bucks, you know, they kind of just followed in that second quarter. Biggest gripe in the first quarter, you know, seven turnovers, things got a little bit sloppy. You know, they're kind of trying to adjust to, you know, the defense, the physicality of this defense that, you know, Boston provides and things of that nature, right? With Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, and, you know, the rest of these guys uh, being point of attack defenders and things of that nature, right? And, you know, when you look, I think in the previous series, when I was looking at this Boston Celtics defense, right, them having, you know, not only a ton of point of attack defenders, a lot of interchangeable guys that you can throw at Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and, you know, just be able to minimize the rest of the role players that Brooklyn offered on the offensive side of the basketball. Boston, understandably, they have a lot of size and a lot of long defenders and guys who are, you know, just athletic, can contest a lot of your jump shots and things of that nature. But I think in this series, Milwaukee is slightly bigger, slightly stronger, and potentially a better defensive matchup for these guys because Boston all the way up until this point for the most part despite them having a lot of success in the first round I do believe there are still some things within their half court offense that need to be tweaked primarily um obviously Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown they just have to do a better job in terms of shooting the basketball and being more efficient and that's something that they've struggled with not only in the regular season but in the postseason at times for the better half of their entire careers it's still a little bit early on um you know these guys are still both under 25 years old but you know with that being said I, I feel like Ime Udoku, at times, I would like to see him run a little bit more action for Jalen Brown rather than allowing him to, you know, just kind of dictate things on his own and forcing him to play a lot of one-on-one coverage. Because obviously we understand, you know, Jalen Brown, he was a guy who came into the league as more so looked upon as a notable defender and not as adequate offensively. You know, there were some things that he needed to twer- work on, obviously, in terms of, you know, jump shooting ability and things of that nature. Had the ability to slash and, you know, all that good stuff. But, you know, with his, his offensive game, growing so much just throughout the years i mean last year he became an all-star for the first time in his entire career you know i think with that being said you know 
we understand what he can do offensively, but I think Ime Udoku and his Boston Celtics offense, they can, they could probably do a much better job in terms of getting him easier looks. You know, we understand Jason Tatum, he's going to be the primary initiator of this offense, allowing him to, you know, operate in pick and roll. And I think, you know, there's, the pick and roll play could be a little bit better in certain moments as well. And, you know, Boston, they run a lot of pistol action, specifically on the left side of the floor today for guys like Marcus Smart to be able to get down here, Jason Tatum, Derek White, and, you know, whoever else was playing the role of that lead guard in that pick and roll scenarios. But I would like to see them do similar things for Jalen Brown. I'm not seeing that action enough for him. And I could possibly be wrong, but, you know, from what I've seen visually today, I just feel like they could do a better job of making his life a little bit easier and preventing some of those inefficient nights where he's shooting below 30, 40 percent from the field. But, you know, all in all, we also have to give credit to this Milwaukee Bucks defense. And I think another thing that we also must highlight is that, you know, they were kind of making both Tatum and Brown work on both sides of the basketball. Tatum already having the role of, you know, having to do everything for this team offensively, play, make, score the basketball at a high rate while being efficient. And then, you know, making him defend on the opposing side of the basketball. I think those some of those things definitely, you know, kind of played in to his inefficiencies offensively. But, you know, Milwaukee offensively, from that standpoint, did a great job of, you know, just getting production from the majority of their guys, right? And, you know, I was one thing that I was really <laughs> curious about heading into this series, what was Milwaukee's offense going to look like in those non-Giannis and Tatakupo minutes? Now, in the first quarter, he literally played 11 minutes and 41 seconds, only sat out from 19... 19 seconds in that first quarter and you know he got a little bit of a rest at the top of the second but you know uh, with that being said I was curious you know is Drew Holiday going to be able to you know be efficient scoring the basketball being able to mix things up is he going to be able to elevate his teammates around him and for the most part he did all of those things taking care of the basketball not turning it over getting us into our spots um, being able to you know initiate this offense at an extremely high rate and you know got, uh, with the help of guys like Bobby Porters who have done a great job in terms of you know taking on those one one, -on one matchups especially in the mid post just being able to take advantage of smaller defenders like Jalen Brown was switching on him in a couple instances out of the pick and roll taking advantage of other mismatches in transition spacing the floor out for us in the corners and the same thing for guys like Pat Connaughton, who also, you know, gave guys hell defensively, just spacing the floor out, you know, just being able to knock down his shots from that dynamic. I think Milwaukee looks really good uh, in this series. And, you know, they, they match up a lot better than I think what most people anticipated. But, you know, Boston's half-court offense just has to be better. And it obviously starts with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But all in all, I think the injury to Marcus Smart definitely minimized them to a certain degree he's one of the primary decision makers within this half court offense and you know a lot of people like to talk about you know his defensive capabilities but he's made so many strides as a decision maker in that lead guard role in this half court boston celtics offense right and i think you know they missed that a little bit with him going down with that injury and you know him just being hampered for the rest of that second half but all in all you know to start out the game they were keeping Giannis out the paint for the most part right they were keeping him out the paint for the most part i mentioned you know they weren't giving him any straight line drives or things of that nature Giannis is going to get a little bit in transition obviously you know him having the length in the athleticism to just be able to finish over the top of the defense he's there's only so much you can do right but I think Milwaukee understandably deep from a defensive perspective they were going to allow you know Boston to shoot a lot of three-pointers right and you look at the stat sheet they shot 36 percent to finish the game but here's the anomaly in this entire situation Boston shot 16 more three-point attempts than they shot two-point attempts when you're taking 53 point attempts in an NBA playoff game, especially when that's not really something that you guys really pride yourself on all that much, I just didn't feel comfortable with Boston playing into the hands of, you know, Milwaukee's game plan defensively. Early on, I talked about, you know, Jason Tatum, he tried, he made an attempt at, you know, trying to get to the rim and, you know, trying to score around the basket, accumulate fouls and things of that nature. But all in all, it wasn't able to work. And I think if you're the Boston Celtics, when you find yourself in a situation where you're in a, when you're sitting in the half court and your best offense is, you know, the action that you get off of offensive rebounds, it's going to be really tough to, you know, take down the defending champions, even despite, you know, Chris Middleton being out of the line but you know milwaukee offensively you know it seemed like at the end of every single quarter they ended on a run in the first quarter despite you know the slow start ended the quarter on a 10-0 run same thing for the second quarter ended in on an 11-3 run if you're boston you have to play for a full 12 minutes you cannot just only play a 9 10 minutes and you know hope that you can come home with a, with the win and things of that nature especially when you have guys like jalen brown who aren't really building much of a rhythm offensively and things of that nature but you know this series i want to see guys like al horford really be able to you know unleash
unleashed themselves offensively, showed off that entire package. I think guys like Al Horford, Daniel Tyson, Grant Williams can be the deciding factors in this series, right? And I think this series is going to primarily be about whose set of bigs perform better. We understand Brooke Lopez just doing a phenomenal job on the defensive end, playing great drop coverage defensively, not allowing anything in, within the paint, painted area. And you know, he was holding his opponents to under 40% at the rim this season, right? And we saw that on display tonight, once again, going up against the Boston Celtics. Obviously, we understand what we're going to get out of Giannis on both ends of the basketball. Him being able to just be a threat from every single dynamic of the game, you know, is something that you could truly be able to rely on. And, you know, you're always going to feel comfortable about yourself if you're Milwaukee heading into battle when you have a guy like that. And Bobby Portis also, like I mentioned, you know, he's taking on a bigger role uh, offensively, specifically in those minutes that Giannis and Tatakupo is out of the game. But, you know, if you're Boston, guys like Daniel Tice, Robert Williams, got to control things on the offensive glass and defensively as well. It's going to be really hard to win playoff games when you're giving up 55 rebounds, right? And 11 rebounds. But, you know, Grant Williams is going to have to knock down shots on the perimeter, especially in open opportunities. And that goes for anybody that, you know, is, is, is spaced out on the floor, especially when you, you know, there's... Uh, six feet between you you and the next defender but i think you know what really killed boston outside of you know being baited into shooting a lot of three-pointers in this matchup i think the fact that you know boston had only six points off of turnovers they they were forced into committing 18 turnovers and milwaukee scored 27 points off of those turnovers was definitely probably one of the biggest things that you can look at in, in terms of you know what decided this game all in all but hey you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or listening on apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notification give us a nice review on apple Podcasts and spotify but besides that it's your boy nicey chingabini you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god